right, well, thanks for joining everybody. This is John Jay and um, I'm, my team is here today. So I have, I have to remember to mention you guys, Moco and, and Ray. I couldn't <laughs> do things without those guys. Is Jim around? Jim's somewhat reliable too. No, I can't say that. He's he's a straight up guy. But anyways, uh, we, we set up uh, aceofcoins.club so that we can create a video membership and, and put a lot of content out there, publish it so that y'all can have access to it. It's hard for me to talk to everybody as much as I like to. And my team is on in the background uh, working on people's cases as they need to, need to, and I work with them directly. So uh, that is a better use of my time. And I think it's more effective for many things. Sometimes you just can't have a video on a subject. You just have to kind of do some critical thinking. And many times I need help to analyze the situation. So we're all there. Anyways, we're handling all stuff. So when, let me just, I, so I've had so many interesting calls this week and I just want to give you kind of a summary of uh, my take on things and people, you know, people ask me to forecast things and I say, well, you got to realize that we're in it. We live in a feudal economy. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. It's just recognize what that means. What does that mean? That means there's no money. There's, there's claims. Okay. There's currency, but it's not really, really money. You can have some gold, but it's not really negotiable You see. So, okay, fine. If, if that's what the system is, then let's just do what those people who forced us into that feudal system and maybe it has to be that way because there really is no altruism. You always have to borrow. You just have to borrow, whether you're borrowing somebody's time or money or something, because you got to pay into the future. If I'm going to build a house, where am I going to get the money for that? I can I can borrow money for that, but I still need to I still need to pay someone in advance to do some work because he's got to go get materials to build it. It's just the nature of our existence. So I don't know. There's some there's some aspects of our economic relationship, like in the family, it doesn't have to be feudalism. It's not, it's more like communism, but it's okay because it's a family and there's shared property rights and that's what it's supposed to be. It's, it's working that way, but it shouldn't be that way in a community of strangers. It shouldn't be that way in a city or a town or a country. Communism doesn't work for the long term, as we understand. Mm -hmm. Private property is, gives people incentive to do things. So this has been the discussion for many years, but we live in a feudal society uh, and it's a war. Your property is the object of the war. What is your property? People can't even tell me what that is. It's not your house. It's the use of your land, okay? Your property may include also your right to use property, not just the property. Just think if you have a contract with somebody, it expresses rights and obligations, right? That you have in the contract. Well, your right to enter into the contract in the first place is a property right. It may also be a fundamental right. A parental <laughs> right is a fundamental right. I would call it a property right as well. The right to privacy is a property right. And I can tell you right now, aside from the biggest currency, the most valuable currency in the world, and it's disgusting for me to say this, is people. And some aspect of that is human trafficking. And your biggest traffickers are the biggest money sources, the banks, the insurance companies, the people you never hear about, the rich, super rich people, and your governments. And the government's the first one, and the banks are the first one, and the military's the first one, and the criminals are the first ones to be using the dark web. That's all going on around us while we're being accused of money laundering <laughs> by those who are using the system of money laundering. Okay, so people. Allie's on. People in are, are the, are the, um, you know, the commodity, like it or not. Now, the biggest addition to this in, in recent times because of technology is going to be our data, okay? Our behavioral data, our identifying information. So these are, this is property because it's unique to yourself. That, that's what has the property aspect to it because it's unique to you. A number, all right, a nine digit number, how many digits is an SSN? Is it nine digits? It's nine digits. That's a number. But when it identifies you by name and date of birth, okay, that's a little bit different now, isn't it? It's an identifying information, right? So the use of it is a property right. And so the system itself is trafficking, maybe that's not the right word, but it's profiting from the collection and use of this information. Not only that, we have lawyers practicing attorney, as you've heard me say before. They're taking property from one and giving to another in a system of fealty. What is that? A feudal system it's a feudal economy in which nobody owns anything really you really don't you're being taxed on it you're forced to use a taxable species of currency script okay 
So fine, fine. I'm not going to complain. Here's the solution. And I'm going to just, this is kind of a prelude, but to, to, you don't solve the problem. What you have to do is use the same techniques that are being used against you to benefit your life. And so what, what is that? Well, the rich people are getting richer, right? You heard this before. Well, then start making more money. You can do it. The technology is all around us. There's no excuse. We're smart. And if you're not smart, and if you know it, work with somebody who is. And if you are smart, work with somebody anyways. You need to. You need to work with people. Okay? And so the, the commodity is our identifying information. Just, just realize that that's all going around on around us. And so people demonize the IRS, right? I'm going to tell you right now, family court is your worst nightmare. Family court. And let's just talk about what happens before family court. So, and I'm not blaming women. I'm just going to say, statistically, women file divorce 80% of the time. 79%. The divorce rate is what? 50% in most markets? There's some pretty good numbers if you're a banker. Those are pretty good numbers if you're a banker that got a bunch of people that shouldn't have a mortgage into the housing market to buy a house, which started in the 80s. Because when you go through family court, chances are you're going to be told or tricked into selling your house to split the equity with the other, right? The both the husband and wife. Why? People just accept that, okay? So the bankers are profiting immensely, just, just to give you one example, from just from those statistics, making it rewarding women to file the divorce and all this sort of thing. And I'm not saying women are the problem, I'm just saying this is what's happening. These are the statistics. So the way you deal with this is understand the rich people that created the system, the rich people that told your state legislature to impose an involuntary receivership on you if you file divorce, you guys don't, you should be outraged at discovering this. If you don't know what I mean, you really should be really pissed off. Your family court is not protecting your family at all. I'm gonna tell you what it's doing. It's imposing an involuntary receivership on you. Why? Because the financial interest in the world got your state legislature to put in rules of bankruptcy in your family court procedure. If you go read your statutes for family court, look at what they're doing to your property rights. They're taking them as if you ask the state to do that, as if you file the bankruptcy. They're treating your property as their property. That's what a trustee does. When you file for protection in the bankruptcy court, the trustee takes your property and treats it like his own under a set of new set of rules. And the priority being to pay creditors because that's how business is done. That's how our feudal system works. So they're, they're liquidating you. Why not? The rich people aren't using family court. They're using their living room in one of their mansions to administer divorce proceedings. And some of them, like you see on the news, like the famous people, they're just doing that for show and making money. They're not, they're not using the court system for divorce for real. They're doing that in their homes, or if they are, they're stupid. Same with probate. All those are done in households of the rich. They don't use the court system for that. They use the court system to liquidate you. Okay, this brings me to what I'm going to say is a solution. You'll hear this many times. Make more money. Double your income. Make twice as much money. Make two or three times as much money as your neighbor makes in your, in your demographic where you live. You don't have to get a nicer house. Enjoy your house if you do. Make more money. Then what do you do with the more, the more money that you're not going to need for anything? Well, have a need for it. <laughs> Put it somewhere. Make it to where the money that you made, that, let's say you doubled your income. Let's say your income's 80 and you made 160, right? For the next year or, or close to it. What do you do with the other 80? Well, find some place to put it. Find something to buy. Find an asset. Buy a restaurant. Take the 80, the other 80, and put it as a 10% down on some asset. I can't tell you what that is right now. I'm just saying, I want you to think like this. Double your income. Get rich if you want to. But you don't have to get rich to make twenty dollars or $30,000 a month. You can just be a normal person and make $30,000 a month when you only need eight. That's how you deal with the system. Don't try to trick your way out of the IRS and do all these old things and change your nationality and all this nonsense. This is childish. This is juvenile. Make more money using the debt system that was created that's enslaving you. This moves me into what we're talking about. The, the, one of the big things that the, the taking here is not just our biometric data. It's not just our property rights and fundamental rights. It's the land. It's always been the land. What's the first object in any war? If you don't, if you don't believe that we're in a war, tell me why uh, Sonoma County in California is taking people's land. 
Mm -hmm. If you look at the merits of that, you'll say, oh, well, it's because they didn't pay the permitting fee. Bullshit. <laughs> no. Yeah, bullshit. Mm -hmm. No, they set this whole thing up so they could take the land mm -hmm. at some point. If you go look at the numbers, you'll be outraged. There's no reason why they should be doing that. Charging In fact, it, it looks like they started a, a program to do it. That's part of it's a business plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a business yeah. plan. Exactly. So your permitting office is just adopting a new product line. It's a new service, let's call it, to take your shit. Okay. Specifically, they want to take your land because they can, because they already were the lien holder. You didn't know it. They were already the lien holder. What? Why do you think you why do you think you asked for a permit to, to do something on your land? Because it's not yours. And it's not the state's either. The state's just a priority lien holder. Why is it a priority lien holder? Because the statute said it is. No one prevented it. I'm not going to get into how to do that, but I'm just saying there's a land grab right now. And it's not just land, it's resources. But let's just talk about land because we want to talk about easements. What? Easements. Easements have been around before the Constitution. I'm not talking about the Constitution. Easements have been around since people saw each other across the land and said, hey, look, there's some people over there. Those people were using the land for something. You're probably using the land for something. And somehow you guys met together or something. I don't know. Maybe you had to go across his land to get to the river, right? And when enough people did that, there had to be some concession. Maybe there was a war, whatever. There had to be a concession. And the one party had to say, well, you know, the river is for everybody. I really can't block you from it. Therefore, I'm going to give you a right of way. And we're going to call it an easement across my land, the right of ingress, the right of egress. Easements have been around forever. An easement is the constitution of a particular piece of land. It is the law of a particular piece of land. I don't need a government to have an easement. It is the governing body. It is the governing rules for the use of that land. This is so powerful and it's just sitting on the shelf and nobody's watching. And you're looking over here at the title and you're getting your asses kicked because the title gets getting foreclosed on and you're complaining and you're trying to fight them over the title when they already you already gave them the title when you got the property. When you accepted the quick claim deed, what came with that was fee simple, feudalism. What does fee simple mean? It ain't yours. You gave them the property from the beginning. When you agreed to a mortgage with your bank, did you know that a lien, mortgage lien, for example, is the taking of property? A notice of lien or a lien from the IRS, for example, a notice of lien is also the taking of property. A permit, a property tax is the taking of the entire parcel of land. It is not just the tax. It's the taking, the right to collect the tax requires you to actually have taken the land. So what are you doing on it? You're the chump taking care of it. <laughs> You're the chump with all the liability. And that's just a feudal system, okay? That's what we have. So understand what it is and understand what rights you could have. So as the title holder, there's all these claims ahead of yours. Stop fighting all that. Let them foreclose. Take the rights you have as the title holder. And I'm going to give you one right with that. Here's what one right is. The right to sell the property. Okay, let's start. That's a pretty good one, isn't it? I have the right to not only sell the property, I, have, I had the right to buy it. I also had the right to borrow against it. That's pretty good. I pretty much have all the rights, don't I? That's, so I'm not going to complain. It's still a feudal society, but let's, let's do this. Let's convey, because I have the right to do this, convey most of my rights to the use of the property in another party. I can't do it to myself. I have to use another party. So I'm going to use a corporation, a trust. I can use my cousin, Bob, whatever. So I write up an easement and I create the law of the use of the property. I create that. There's no statute that says I have to do a certain way, right? There's no statute that says you have to go to the grocery store on a certain day and buy certain groceries, right? It sounds like a silly example, right? So you have to think like that. If I have a right to, to say something, well, then I can say whatever the hell I want. You can't tell me if I already started, I'm starting with the right to say something. So if I have the right to sell my property, it's a pretty good one, right? Pretty comprehensive. That means I have a pretty good right to convey all kinds of other rights I haven't even written down yet. I can just make them up and I can convey them to what's called an easement, the right of ingress and egress, the right of the use of the property, 
irrespective of the constitution, your county codes and all that, because all your county codes are what? Your title insurance, your county codes, your property taxes are all based on the title. How do you think the uh, Europeans took the land from the Indians? How do you think they sustain the government? They have this title. What's that? They just made it up. It's a title. <laughs> because it used to be from the king, right? The king would give you a, a privilege, a prerogative, a priority right over the land. He had the ultimate right, of course. So uh, easements, what the heck? So you've got, you know, everybody's taking your property. You're in there cutting the grass every Saturday. <laughs> you keep it look nice, looking nice or whatever. You're farming with it or whatever. But you've got all these lien holders on there. As long as you make them happy, you, everything's good. But something something interferes with that. Okay, Maybe it's time that your county or your city wants to take it because it ain't yours anyways. And how do they take it? Well, they have to justify it in the public's eye. It has to look okay. It has to look acceptable. And the way they do it is with the permitting. So they do this crazy permitting and no one's going to look at the case file. No one's going to understand it because they don't know this stuff. So it looks like he just didn't pay the permitting fees. And we're really- Or, with or the water resources What's in that? Oregon. Or the water resources in right. Oregon. Right, mm -hmm. resources, right. All kinds of ways using your privileged occupation of the land to exercise another claim on the property. But they're exercising the claim on the title. So whether or not you have this thing going on, most people aren't motivated to do anything about this. So if if until there's a problem on the title. So if you were to convey your rights while you're still having the right to sell the property, if you convey- you cannot convey exactly all the rights you have as a title holder, but you can convey a big chunk of them, enough to where it doesn't matter, right? So you convey all the rights, most of all the rights to an easement, and it has to be in a different party. And you still cannot have, as a matter of record, the benefits of the easement rights. You have to be clearly the title holder. And when the foreclosure takes place, you have to have lost your title rights. Now, you can recover them through a lease agreement or something like that, you cannot be the easement holder unless something happens later after the fact. But there has to be a clear separation of ownership and the title parcel that you're starting with has to be different than the easement. So that could mean the dimensions of the property. That could mean the resource on the property. For example, maybe the easement does not include all of the oak trees as an example. I like to write them and my team likes to write them uh, in a way that is appears to, I mean, I think we're all trying to do this. Let's protect some endangered species. And lo and behold, they're all over the place because the whole thing's a big scam, right? Everybody's getting free money. from. Them. So, uh, so grab one and protect them. P make your, you know, pitcher plant your best buddy and you're going to protect them, right? So write up your easement for the purpose of conserving a, a plant or animal species. So why would I do that? Well, there's a reason. We'll get to that. I like to have in my easement provisions, a dispute resolution clause that's really important now because why would I go to the trouble of writing up an easement to be so clever to be get around this title system, this hijacking, this pirating of your property, uh, and then allow a circuit court judge to just in one wave of his magic wand say, nope, it doesn't exist. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna take a dispute. I'm gonna make the new title holder that foreclosed on my property or got the property afterwards, I'm going to make him go through an arbitration process outside the court system. And I'm going to govern the dispute resolution in my easement agreement. And it's the law of the land. You cannot repeal it. You cannot get around it unless you have an interest or unless you've shown fraud or something like that. You just, Ray, tell me, what, what did you find on the easements? They don't lose, right? Ray? Oh, okay. Yeah. No, no, they don't. The court cases, if you research them, yeah, the easement. It's the that's why they call it the dominant party. It becomes yeah. the dominant estate. <clears throat> yeah. Don't lose the easement holder is the king. It, mm -hmm. it just has to be because it existed long before our constitution and all. It's the law of the land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think the constitution may have been written to settle debts and prevent people from shooting each other at noon, you know, in duels or something. But uh, we don't, you know, we have all the laws. We just have to write them. We have to exercise our rights. Yeah. So I'm glad you found that. It's very powerful. So we have a dispute resolution clause that I like to have into the uh, the easement agreement that brings. So so let's say someone forecloses on the property, right, and gets the title, says, "Hey, nobody else can come on here," and you come back and say, "Okay, well that's fine. You do what you want to do. You can get rid of possession at the title holder since you bought it at a foreclosure auction. That's fine. But 
you can do what you want, but except you can't really interfere with my use of the property because the easement, you know, it gives me the use of the property in this way. So you better apprise yourself of what those terms are. Oh, by the way, um, you got to pay rent. <laughs> so that's kind of how we set up the easements. It reverse the whole thing around, okay? And establish that so that we still have access to the police power without going to the courts on the merits of the case, on the merits of the easement. What we do is we get an arbitration award, which I believe we should be able to do. We go through arbitration, we get an award. Then we confirm it in the court. The court cannot review it on the merits. The court just has to look at it and say, well, there's no showing of fraud here. Yes, I'm gonna grant the, confirm the arbitration award. And once we do that, we have all the remedies that are normally available to the title holder. And the easement is not going away. The easement is the law of the land, not the title holder. It steps over the title holder. That's why they call it the dominant state, like Greg said. So that's what we've been looking at doing. And yeah, they're just, they're kind of new. And uh, people ask me all these hypothetical forecasting questions. And all I can tell you is the law is, we're just using the law the way it is. And time will tell. So far, what I've seen is uh, the police don't know what to do except obey the judge's orders, which is what they should be doing. Mm -hmm. Just makes us have to do more work, which is fine. It's it's set up that way. So uh, that's what we're doing right now. Is that kind of what you wanted me to cover? Yeah, that was excellent. Awesome. Excellent. Did I miss anything? All right. A little bit of history in there and then the power of this stuff. And why not just do it? I mean, look at it this way. I've got some acreage in Florida and I'm, I'm so busy. I can't even do it for my own property. I have three easements I'm preparing. And the reason is I have three major uses for the property to raise money, to make money. So I need the easements so that I can secure the interest of someone who's going to help fund what I'm going to do on the property. So I'm using the easements to raise money. That's what I'm doing, doing with. Mm -hmm. Plus, I'm not paying the property tax, so that'll come in later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so you're using I'm, the easement to raise money. Yeah so, yeah. so if I set up a corporation as an easement, the grantee, and I and I solicit somebody for you know a million dollars, I want to give him something, not a promise. I want to give him the easement over the land. I still control the land for the mm -hmm. HOA. But right, so you create you create a non possessory uh, property interest. Exactly. He that. has possession of the land rights, 51% or something, however, whatever we, ne we negotiate, and they're mm -hmm. under Smith, and the term is whatever we decide. So it's a financing term. So I can't take it back. It's a lien on the property. It's the law of the property because he put up the money. Now he's the boss, basically, well, he or she or whatever, you know. But it gives somebody an interest in the property that's recorded. <clears throat> it's a way to raise money, in my opinion. So. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's, been, that's genius right there because that allows the holder of the easement to have a right of way or use of the property that they do not own or possess. It's very important. I mean, if I were the person putting up the money, I'd want that too. But no one's offering that. I think we should, uh, especially if you're developing land for you know things like that. But yeah, so you're asking, Renee's asking, would, would the easement allow me to keep uh, a septic tank with mandatory sewer hookup? Well, okay, so the easement is the use of the property, right? So in the easement, you can even do something like this. You can even write that into the easement. The grantee shall. <laughs> now, here's what you also want to do. If you want something mandatory sewer hookup, you write it into the easement and say, you shall do this. The grantee shall do this. So says the title holder today, right? Not only that, you make the title holder liable to protect you and and help protect you in the fulfillment of your obligation to have mandatory sewer hookup, which you want anyways. So now when the new title holder comes in, he has to be your advocate. He can't even be your adversary under the contract. You see how powerful that is. And yeah, sure, if someone's getting foreclosed on, you can use it for that. I mean, it's like surgery. <laughs> it's ugly, but hey, what else are you gonna do? You transfer your rights while you have them to the easement and come back later and recover them. Well, I mean, what happens to the title holder? Uh, he's going to realize he stepped into something. It's going to be way, way more expensive. He's throwing good money after bad, right? So maybe he'll lease the property back from you as the easement holder. Maybe he'll do that. Maybe, maybe he'll leave. I don't know. Yeah, I don't I don't understand that many question. If it's designed as dominant estate using nine percent, isn't that a, by nature possess possessing? I don't know what that is. Yeah, I don't understand Batman's question. Batman, can you just explain it? Yeah, I don't know. Stray, stray what do you want to ask? 
Okay, this might sound dumb, but so during a foreclosure, the house is up for sale. What if somebody buys the house while you're while you're trying to buy the easement? Buy the easement? Yeah, right. Like you're trying to purchase the easement of the property and you're saying. Well, if, does the easement exist at the time the house is foreclosed upon? The easement goes with the the title holder, put it that way. So, Okay, so do, it doesn't have to be up for foreclosure to buy the easement. I don't know if you buy the easement. I, not, you can I'm sorry, it. maybe I just don't understand. Like, I'm not wording this properly. Okay, so the easement gives a lien interest to somebody. And why okay. would I give a lien interest to somebody? Well, because maybe he's going to give me some money to develop the property. So It's there's... a written agreement, Stray. The, the easement is a written agreement that outlines certain conditions of giving... Uh, possession or, 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 you know, certain rights to the easement holder, generally an LLC, not in your name. Okay. So like for my, for my own house, um, that's already under a mortgage. And I don't think the easement has been claimed. You don't have an easement. You haven't written an easement. You can have many easements too. Oh, yeah. I see. You can have a series of easements. They're overlays on top of each other. Yeah, we, we're helping people create easements. Yeah. Just create it, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Like the electric company, when they put their pole on your property, they easement. have it, yeah. that's an easement. You're that's putting an easement on top of their easement, by the way, and it will not interfere with their easement, just so you know. Even though you're the dominant estate, ironically, the cable company has more power than the title holder. Yeah. <laughs> oh, interesting. This so how a, are you? It's a judo move. It's you, <laughs> Stray, are actually creating an easement in the name of, say, an LLC, but it's yeah. really to protect your rights, to protect your ability to have control of the land. So it's a reverse easement. It's not like, I mean, I don't know if that's the right way to say it. Yeah, yeah. So like, I could just do that to my neighbor's house. What justifies me being able to do no, that? To no, no, you do no, it. Okay, your conveying property. easement rights means you have the rights in the first place. Right. In order to convey them, you have to first have them. That's why I said... Let's just start with the title holder who has the right to sell the property. That's a pretty good right, isn't it? That yeah. probably means you have the, all kinds of rights. So if I have the right to sell the property, that's the test. Then I have the right to create the easement. Okay. I have the right to grant an easement. And once I mm -hmm. do, it makes that easement holder have dominant authority over myself, actually. Right. So as long as you have title of the property, mm -hmm. you can create an easement that can convey some of the rights that you are that are they're trying to strip from you over to another entity, the easement entity that you can then use to retain those rights. Yeah, and there are many examples where a driveway is an easement. It doesn't always mm -hmm. have to be that way, but if you, sometimes you share with your neighbor, you know, there's there's situations like that. And then, yeah, if you if you have a large purchase, like if you get a large debt on the property and you've already got an easement or something, or then you later put an easement on there to defeat the loan, you could do it, but the bank could come back and and, and argue that it was a fraudulent something and probably defeat the easement, probably. So if it's overtly to defeat a legitimate claim, as much as I hate to say it, it's probably not a good idea to do. It's just like somebody's asked me the other day about, what if I just don't file forever and then I keep getting all this money and yeah, okay, you risk a, a tax evasion claim, right? I mean, if, if you just, just disappear, the IRS will leave you alone. But in this case, if you're if you're gonna do something like that, try to go out of your way to do an easement for the sole purpose of defeating a mortgage, I wouldn't recommend it. You probably could. I just wouldn't recommend it. Okay. Right. Thank you. What what we're experiencing, what, what what we're seeing, and why we've been so focused on this is because uh, we're seeing land grabs where people are having their property taken from them by the county, by the government. Like this is happening in Oregon where the farmers are being told their water is going to be shut off because they don't have any, they, you know, there's, we need to put the water over here. And they're saying they're going to turn the water off or that they own the water. And so this is like making the, um, the farmers, they're going to drain their, their uh, fish um, farms and they're not going to be able to be productive on their land. Then in Sonoma, we're seeing people, I, I mean, my guess, I don't know what their ulterior motive is, but just in my own thinking, I'm thinking, okay, this is another smart city. This is where they want to build out. They want to do some stuff underneath it. They, they, they want people whole, off the land. To they get want people off it. the land so they can take it and do whatever the heck their, their, their new plan is, their new idea. It's also a way to put money back into the coffers. It's a way to strip people of their rights. It's a way to, you know, there's, there's a lot of things going on uh, in this land grab. And we're also seeing a lot of squatters 
show up on property. So there's it's it's a it's another undercurrent of what's being. Yeah, it was a scheme. It's an agenda. Multifaceted to take people's property, unlike any time in history. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was Maui? I think Maui is going to be a smart city. You mm -hmm. know, like what what is that? And all yeah. those people. Now, uh, Sean's asking about UCC one. Okay, so UCC one is a notice of lien form. It's a document under the UCC code for a security agreement. Security agreements are different than an easement. They're two, two different things. So just don't don't mix those up. You don't need to mix stuff together. <laughs> so they sound cool, but we don't have to mix things together. An easement is good on its own. And then, yeah, so what is it? Um, if somebody wants to talk to you, consult with you, uh, Mocha, what do you, what do they do? Do you have an email address or something? Right, yeah. So uh, the, the website is <laughs> thezanga.com. And that's where you can sign up for an easement package. Okay. And the thing is, is that, you know, just because you have an easement doesn't mean, especially if you're under attack, it doesn't mean you know what to do with it. You need some guidance and some help. And that's where we as a team. We'll share the whole thing. Yeah, we help draft it, but then we help you work through the process of resolving whatever issue it is you're trying to solve. Now, it's also prudent estate planning. And so you can just like get it done now and have it. And then when the time comes to deal with something and you need some assistance, then you can also work with us to, to find solutions. All right, thank you. And um, let's see, sucking chest wound. <laughs> what is your what did you want to ask? Hey John, yeah. um, I was wondering, is the easement correlate to claiming the uh, air rights above your household? You could do that with an easement, yes. If you can describe it, the land, the use of land, which includes air rights and mineral rights and anything down to the center of the earth and to out to outer space, that would be within that parcel. You could do that. I was just wondering if might be able to do that, get enough people to claim the rights, the air rights to stop all the chemtrails that are flying above our head. Yes, that would be very okay, interesting. Now there's, that's good thinking, but think about what they're doing. It's a military operation and they would claim it's national security and screw your rights. But think about this. <laughs> okay, if you're not able to effectively use the property, mm -hmm. then it's abandoned. It, it has to be something like that, okay? so. Here's a concept for you guys. So for, for years and years and years, we're, we're enjoying the commercial airline system. And the commercial airliners are using the air that's ours. They're flying over all of our property, right? So they must fly over tens of thousands of people's property, right? They, they're not trespassing, but let's just say, you know, that maybe they're trespassing over everybody's property, right? Okay. Except, need, except Barbara Streisand. Yeah, we need, we need yeah. to do that. Because I, I want to get somewhere and I want to get somewhere fast. And so thank you for not saying anything. I'm flying over your land. Okay. Realistically though. But so what's happened is the way it works is because the airlines are leasing the path, they're leasing the, the, the traffic, the pattern from the government through the FAA. It's a path. They don't just fly anywhere. Um, so the government's making money off of this or they're probably breaking even or whatever they're doing. Okay. And we're paying for this. This is fine. This is fine. But because the property is ours collectively, we can't really make our minuscule little millimeter claim on each little segment of space up in the sky. It doesn't make any sense, right? But so we we have the government doing these things, regulating our property, but then it's held in trust. Why shouldn't we be compensated for our property? Meaning that maybe we should get some sort of tax benefit from it. I don't know. It's, it's really being held in trust by the government. It's our property, but it's not realistic for us to make a claim and use that little piece of air, that column of air that's above our land. So we need the government to, to get involved with that. But just the same, why should we be paying for airline travel? Why shouldn't that be just part of the deal, right? You get to use our land and it's in trust. And if you're not flying for commercial purposes, if you're just a private you know, citizen just traveling around, uh, then you shouldn't have to pay for it, right? They get the money from the government, right? Something like that. I don't know. Maybe that's a dumb idea. But it just helps you understand the property rights there. Even though we have them, it's not realistic for us to claim them because we're not going to use them for anything. So the airspace is kind of like a permissive easement. They did it for so many years. Sure. It's just, mm. Yeah. You want them to do it. It's just like the rights of way for the roads. Mm -hmm. you, want, right. you want them. I mean, I have to say here in Orlando, they do a pretty dang good job of regulating. I mean, when they're fixing the roads, they actually go out of their way. The county goes out of its way to do the repair work on big projects at night. 
I mean, they really do a great job. In fact, my wife, she had a, a broken tire the other day, the tire blew out and she was on the interstate and she called me, of course, and I was going to come over there and or something happened with AAA. She, they couldn't come out for some reason. So I was going to come out there. And uh, before I even got out the door, their publicly funded roadside assistants came out and helped her for free. That's pretty cool. I mean, you want stuff like that. This mm -hmm. is the public right of way. So, you know, that's what government is for. But just realize what that property right is. Just like, how the heck did you get that main street through your town? Well, it's probably some rancher who got sick of people just coming on his property all the time and said, look, you guys can have it. Just take care of it. <laughs> you know, that's where they come By from. the FAA rules, the airspace seat is 500 foot uh, minimum. Aircraft coming yeah, over. 500, here. So, yeah, 500. Four to 500, yeah. Yeah. So it's five, because I used to fly and I, you know, so I had to keep that. I was looking at the feet. drone regs, you know, for, for unmanned. Well, I see that. Yeah, the drone. Now, the drones are invading airspace, which would be mm -hmm. if you have an easement on the. They're not saying anything yet because it's not a problem, but we could we could have drones flying over the existing rights of way. You cannot fly a drone legally over somebody's building. Like, you can't fly as a crow flies legally. Mm. Unless you're probably a thousand feet up, but then you're going to have problems with the FAA. So if you want to not have problems with the FAA, you got to be trespassing. So the way you get around it is you follow the regs. They're on the books. You can fly over the street. Mm. You have to make, you know, Main Street, make a left, you make a right, left, whatever, above the street. You have to use the easement. You have to use the easement. Yeah. <laughs> we right. That. We could do that. Now, I imagine mm. uh, we could we could easily have flying cars, okay? I just think that ju judging by the way people drive now, it's horrific. It would be a disaster. I think the only reason, the only way we should have flying cars is when we're not flying them. We're using them and they're flying us somewhere because we told them where to go. They should be all computerized, right? That's another subject. But yeah, it's very interesting to consider all the different aspects of what an easement really is. Because mm -hmm. like in, in Nevada, I think it's a real big deal with the water. And then you got mineral rights. And, and then what happens if, there's um, a reservoir of oil maybe that's discovered that kind of comes onto your property. And there's all kinds of things going on there. Mm -hmm. But what I'm talking about is just the use of the property for just living. I'm not digging down in there and not building something up. I'm just living <laughs> on the surface right. as a private citizen, right? Or whatever you want to say, private. Right. Right. <laughs> and know. HOA encroachments or people trying to tell you what to do with your land. I mean, uh, a person uh, a moment ago, I forget your name, but was saying, you know, actually, I don't want to hook up to the sewer, I want to keep my septic tank. Can I use the easement to fight that? You know, it was, it was the other way around. Yeah, because the claim but, is on your title. Yeah. And so what you do is go around it. You just create an easement that says you have to do it this way and then mm -hmm. make the title holder defend your right. Mm -hmm. Defend your obligation in the easement. Mm -hmm. So the thing you want to use your property for that the permitting people won't let you or that want to make you pay a lot of money for or something, mm -hmm. make that a matter of an obligation in an easement. And then make the title holder defend it. Mm -hmm. How are they going to get around that? You go so you go into arbitration if there is such if that need is needed, and then the arbitrator is going to say, "Well, you have an obligation to defend this. What are you doing here? There's no adversary. Mm -hmm. Get out of here. <laughs> the easement rights I'm going to find for the for the respondent, you know, or whatever." Right. Okay, so HOA has to do with, and I didn't want to get into this too far, but HOA has to do with the the, the lien rights on the title, which is an effective tool. Uh, and the reason why it's effective is because it's the last lien right. It's the last lowest priority. So, and it never goes away. So everybody can foreclose and then the HOA can come in and foreclose on everybody else. If that helps guide you a little bit in your thinking. But I, I wouldn't mix them together. I'm not talking about them as don't think that just because one's a good idea and one's a good idea or you think it's a good idea, let's all mix them and it gets a better idea. Just because no, we don't do that. You use a strategy for for one purpose. You don't need to mix it with others to make it better. It doesn't, it's not making it better. Mm -hmm. I mean, like when you say you want to get out of an HOA, you probably mean that there's something the HOA wants you to do that you don't want to do. Yeah, again, it's a claim on the title. So now we have an HOA versus an easement. Oh, it's like Godzilla. And, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and the big I mean, uh, Michelin man. I don't know. <laughs> big scary look, if you guys like the airspace thing, why don't you talk, go ahead and file an easement on your airspace? I mean, I don't know. What good is that? It's interesting. 
but yeah, so so this is what uh, it's a, it's a it's a tool, it's a, a strategy. Uh, there's different aspects to this. Okay, so you got the purpose of the easement is to use the property a certain way. I like to throw in there it's a conservation easement because it's then politically unpopular to challenge it, and it's expensive because then you bring in expert witnesses and all this jazz, and we're going through arbitration anyways, which is the really the most important thing is. I'm not leaving the easement open to be decided by some circuit court judge. I want it to be decided by people just like me. Mm -hmm. Arbitrators. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and arbitration. So arbitration is, we all have the judicial power. We can be arbitrators. So we can just, the way I think that, that when you have more people on a jury, I think you have a better decision. Mm -hmm. You have a, a more fair decision. So the idea behind the arbitration is we convene an arbitration panel under the commercial arbitration rules that are accepted nationally and internationally. Now I've done this before many times and um, it's been done against us actually. That's how I learned about it way back mm -hmm. in the early 2000s. So uh, we convene an arbitration panel following those rules. It's almost like the rules of civil procedure, but it's almost the rules of civil procedure and the commercial arbitration rules are along the lines of Robert's rules of order, which came out of England. In the parliamentary days, when the when the uh, businesses took over the, a lot of the king's executive authority, because they just had to do it that way, so they developed this, these rules of procedures that made it fair for everyone to have a, a say when they're representing their constituents. So long story. So we get into rules of civil procedure for court, and then we get rules of civil procedure for arbitration, which is out of court, and those are called commercial arbitration rules. They're maybe a little less formal. The arbitrator or arbitration panel has a little more discretion, and once the uh, decision is uh, reached, um, it's formalized into what's called an award, and then the prevailing party would typically just go to the court and get a confirmation because we gave the court the monopoly over access to the police power, and the reason why you want to go to the court is so you can get access to the police power, meaning a writ of possession. In fact, I think the arbitration panel would issue the writ of possession, really. That's what you're going to mm -hmm. do because because the arbitration panel can give equitable relief or declaratory judgment as well as damages right yeah so batman that probably relates to your question too the the easement is possession possession what is that phrase Nine it is on the of possession of use of the property yeah mm -hmm. yeah and thanks batman for putting those up there yeah yeah, it's it's the use of the property. Like I like I started this conversation. It's um, it predates uh, all our existing formal laws, our constitution, and everything. The easements were around since people could see each other across the land. We just didn't call them that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's permission to use someone else's land because it makes sense. <laughs> and once you do it, it's permanent because it really made sense. And you wouldn't sell the easement. What you could do is sell the easement rights. That's what you're really doing. And so the way you would do that, I think, is to package them in it like a security. Not really security, but it's an interest in a company or a trust. I like using an LLC. You could use a trust. It's a little more complicated. And it doesn't have to be that formal. You don't need certificates or anything. But you just need a contract that says, uh, regarding the grantee, the rights of the grantee expressed in the easement, this other party has so much ownership of that percent or whatever, mm -hmm. right? And once that's there, and maybe it's a majority interest, right? That would give the investor the voting power. Or you might wanna say something like, the investor has uh, two votes to my one vote. Mm -hmm. That gives him the, you know, the power. But essentially what you're saying is whatever rights you convey to the easement, and then say you as a title holder, you know, go through this foreclosure process and, you know, your life gets turned upside down. Even when this other entity buys the property, the easement is still intact. So the rights that you previously conveyed to the easement yeah. still exist yeah. for the new property owner. Yeah. And yeah. you can handle whatever issue you're facing, which is like, you know, not being thrown off your property or not, you know, having to build things you don't want to build or not, you know, whatever the deal is. It's the reason that you want the easement is why you convey those rights so that even- The easement if becomes the new law of the land. Yeah. By default, whatever the statutes were related to the title was the law of the land. What you're simply doing is legally changing that. Mm -hmm. Just like with the biometric security agreement. 
And I'll give you a quick example. Somebody sent me a text message the other day and she was telling me something like something about Google and the collection of your data. And it it was a very favorable term that Google had announced regarding the collection of your data. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, I wrote back to her on text and I said, I said, it doesn't matter what Google tells you it's going to do with your data. Screw them. They don't get to decide, even if it's in your favor. You decide and put a lien on the use and the manner in which your property can be used. Should have put a lien uh, on it. <laughs> yeah, you don't get to tell me what to do with my property, even if it's, uh, even if I like it. You still don't get to tell me. Right. Because yeah. if you can tell me that you're going to do that with my property, you can change it later. Mm -hmm. So if I like what you said word for word, I'm going to make that a lien in which I have the claim now word for word. Mm -hmm. That way you can't take it away from me. Yeah. That, that should be, she goes, oh, well, I find this in your videos. And I said, no, I just wanted to say it that way to you because that should be your attitude. It's your property. How dare you talk about my property that way? I don't care if mm -hmm. you're nice. That should be our attitude for this stuff. It's very important that people retain the property use and the property rights. It's it's important because the government's an insane person. Mm -hmm. Government agencies are insane. When you get a group of people working together, a lot of times they don't have a conscience. We do. And so for that, it's very important, not just for money, but it's important for the future. Mm -hmm. We need to have the same people decide what is done with most of the land. I mean, look at look around, look what the corporations have done with it so far. Right. Shit on it. Yeah, they're polluting it. Yeah. Crazy. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the squatters, that's another scheme, right? So if you have squatters, there's no such thing as squatters rights after seven days. However, your police are being advised that there are. And now it's putting the burden on you, the legitimate property owner, to deal with it without the police's help. Mm -hmm. So that's another part. That's another scheme. And yeah, maybe we can use the easements. Uh, and there's some other methods too. I mean, there's some other strategies we can use, but uh, the easements may also be something that's actually probably not even necessary. But yeah, I mean, I don't know about squatters rights or what. That, that, is that a matter of statute? I think sometimes in many jurisdictions, squatters rights are a matter of statute. <laughs> so, and that's a problem because there's a scheme to, to uh, just annoy people push them off their feet in some way or another and get people so frustrated. Yeah. With the money system, the use of land, uh, not being able to find a job because of all the automation. Mm -hmm. People so pissed off, they'll accept anything. That's what's coming. But also the squatters, and at least in a little bit of, um, you know, uh, investigation we've done into it, the squatters are actually showing up with like fake leases. Oh, yeah. So it's not just like they're just showing up. They're, they're literally, um, they, they're being... Uh, yeah. Uh, they're overtly school, committing crimes of fraud, but yeah, they're not and, being prosecuted. Yeah. And they're That's using false fake documents leases, the false, false documents, yes. Or filing That's false a telltale documents. sign that your government's involved with it. Exactly. It's a, it's an op. It's an op. But and it's maybe a, that's what yeah. they're doing with some of the, you know, all these, you know, uh, people that they're letting into the country, the the illegals. You know, it's like maybe that's one way that they're schooling them to to find some residency. I don't know. Could Whatever be, their plans yeah. are. They you might know. be trying to create a, a pattern that they can just enforce on people. I don't know. Right. That's right. Scary. So but a writ of possession would be useful in that situation, wouldn't it, John? I, I think a writ of possession, I mean, if you're vulnerable in this area, why not get a writ of possession now? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Just go go do that. Because maybe uh, in six months you're going to go on vacation, right? And right. you'll only have a writ of possession. Right. Against anybody that's not you. <laughs> that's what you want to do. Right. <laughs> anybody that's not you. <laughs> All right. Well, okay, then uh, unless you guys can make some more comments, I, I've got this recorded and I'll, um, I'll publish mm -hmm. it, all right? It's important. No, I think this was a good uh, overview, a refresher overview. Yeah, check out the Zunga.com because that's my team and uh, I, I'm in the background there. So Consulting. Consulting. <laughs> every step. Consulting in every step, yes. Yeah, so that makes it easier for me. Instead of consulting with 30 or 40 people a week, it's two or three or five. And so mm -hmm. we can be more effective that way. Mm -hmm. uh, John, where will you be publishing this again? I know you said it before. I am going to put this, I will put this, I know sometimes I don't, but I will put this on YouTube. That was my intent. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I definitely could listen to this again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to render it tonight and I'll, I'll upload it to, tonight. And so I'll make it public. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And um, we're, we do have an arbitration list. People who want to, um, someone's saying they want to know about participating as a Oh, yeah. Lady um, M's asking, sure. Um, you can be an arbitrator. 
uh, and you don't need qualifications. It's nice if you want to give us your resume. Maybe you'll be asked for that at some point, but mm -hmm. you don't need any special qualifications. And yeah. I know that sounds ridiculous, <laughs> but when you have a group of people, I mean, look at it this way. Look who's on your juries. Mm -hmm. What are their qualifications on murder trials? Right. And they get explained the rules and they follow the rules. So, so don't and tell they talk me that we need yeah. certain qualifications to be an arbitrator yeah, so, <laughs> over civil matters. <laughs> yeah. We'll just go over the commercial rules. It's it's easy. Yeah. And I mean, we'll the judicial it. power was conveyed to our government employees. We have it. It came from us. Mm -hmm. We have it. We just haven't been using it. So this is a way in which we can use it because we don't need access to the police power when we're exercising a judicial power. We do later. Right. Not now. Okay. Actually, I said that I typed that wrong. Being on the arbitration panel, I put list. Yeah, we I have a list, and then we'll we'll select them and deselect them, or however it works in the whole process. And yeah. uh, we're basically following the commercial rules of arbitration, <clears throat> not making stuff up. So uh, it'll be enforceable. It's the law. All right, y'all. Well, thank you so much for being on, and enjoy your uh, enjoy your weekend. Thank I you. Mean, thank you, John. Great call, John. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. All right, and I will publish this so it'll be up there. You guys enjoy. Great. Thanks, Thanks John. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night.